Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make uh, some vintage themed cards or inspired cards and they got a little bookmark in them. So this is kind of fun because even when you take the bookmark out, it's still a pretty card. Um, so this could be used as a bookmark um, or a keepsake, whatever. You could even tuck in a gift card back there if you wanted to, or you could put a pocket on the inside or you have plenty of real estate to write some meaningful notes. And what I really like about this is that you can use whatever you have on hand. It's a great way to use up um, ticket stubs and odds and ends and ephemera and old pattern papers, things like that that you've had for a while that you'd like to get used up. So what I'm going to start with is a craft card base. This is a 5x7 just made out of heavyweight cardstock and I am going to use uh, just some map paper because it's pretty, um, you know, it's pretty neutral and this has been sitting in my stash for quite a while and I just haven't really had that much use for it. I don't know why, it's just, I, but I like mat stacks because they are four and a half by six and a half and they make a perfect, um, a perfect solution here for covering your five by seven cards. When you have a six by six pad, it's not big enough. And I feel like there's a lot more waste with that. And if you like to do the five by seven cards, look for those mat stacks. You can find them at any of the big box craft stores. Um, and different brands make them, like Die Cuts With A View makes them, Paper Studio makes them, there's probably other companies as well. So I've got a full mat here, and the first thing I'm gonna do to this is I am going to do some um, faux stitching. So I've got my little uh, little piercer tool here, it's a little piercer wheel, and different companies make these. Um, this one's by EK Success. There are, you might have one if you've been doing any any uh, paper crafting for a while. You can also get them from Stampin' Up. I'm not sure if they still sell them, but you know, they're, they're around. Or you could probably use like a dressmaker's wheel. And I'm just using a little ruler as a guide. I'm just putting that next to the edge of my paper. And I am just going about a um, quarter of an inch away from the edge and just rolling it across on the foam mat to give me these stitching holes. Okay, you probably can't see it right now, but I will bring it up to the camera a little bit closer in a second and then you'll be able to see. You can also do it from the back side if you want the holes to poke out a little bit more, but I'm gonna do it this way, you'll see in a second why. Um, there, there you can see, you can see them really well on the back side a little bit more subtle on the front side. But then what I'm gonna do is take a pen and I'm gonna trace over those um, those holes. This is just a, um, a small tip or fine tip, um, uh, whatchamacallit, pen by Faber-Castell. Ooh, you know what, I forgot to turn off my overhead lights and my ruler is glaring. Let me just turn those off real quick. Run across the room and turn off my lights. No editing needed. Yeah. I like that, you get a little serenade too. All right, we're going to, I well actually, you know, I did last week's video and I did it, um, you know, I didn't have a lot of editing. I did all the narration live and I got a good response from that. People were like, it's the old frugal crafter, I miss it. I'm like, all right, I can do that, why not? As long as it's not too complex and I don't mess up too much. If you find that your pen is skipping too much, just kind of hold it at a little bit higher of an angle and go a little slower because the nib of your pen is gonna jet down into those holes, um, but it disrupts your line and that's what makes it look like real stitching. See, if I hold that up there, you can see it's got a nice texture to it. It's got a really pretty stitched line. You And I'm using a fine tip pen. You could use like the Tombows, which are a little bit more bold, but that's gonna, it's not gonna look as realistic as using the finer tip. You just sometimes have to go back over it because the nibble wanna, wanna skip there. That looks pretty good. I think I will go over this one a little bit, a little bit slower. I always try to do things fast for video, but I guess I shouldn't worry about that too much. You wanna get a good look. Okay there, that looks pretty good, I think. Alrighty. Now what I'm going to do is distress the edges. You can use the edge of a scissors blade, but if you have one of these little distress tools, this one's an old one by Heidi Swap, but again, I know that Stampin' Up! had one. I know Tim Holtz has one. Um, I think there's probably a, one by Tonic Studios as well. So, you know, or just the, the edge of your blade of scissors will work, but that's, you know, that's a little bit more dangerous. You might cut yourself, so just be careful. Don't cut your hands off if you do that. And there, it just gives it a nice texture. I think it's really pretty. So then I'm just gonna put some adhesive on the back here. Now you could make up a bunch of these and you could do different themes. There are so many different um, like packs of stickers and die cuts that you can just buy ready to go at your craft store if you don't have any in your stash or if you have like pattern paper that's got a lot of really 
pretty things on it and you're kind of afraid to use it because it's so pretty, you could cut out elements on your pattern paper and use that for um, die cuts and embellishments. So what I did is I actually put a bunch of these different um, die cuts that I have collected into a, uh, just into a bin here so I can kind of see what I like. Um, some of these are stickers that are really pretty. Like, look at that big peony. Isn't that gorgeous? Um, oh, this rose is really pretty too. And I'll just kind of pull out a few and decide what I think looks best. Some of these are stickers. Some are just uh, glue-on die cuts. Um, I like to mix something that's kind of like masculine with something that's kind of feminine. So if you look at like um, I would think of maps look a little bit more masculine looking, uh, like blueprints and stuff would look a little bit more masculine, whereas like um, flowers look a little bit more feminine. And here I'm just going to layer up some stuff. Now I was using glassine bags last week on a Halloween treat bag and I realized that they would make such pretty little like bookmark pockets on a on a card. So that's kind of what inspired this. So sometimes when you're crafting, your projects will lead you to, down other paths. All right, so, so I got that there and I got that up there. That's kind of pretty. Um, and then I'll just kind of like lay out a few different things. Um, I found these little authentic um, cards and I thought they were so pretty at um, at the craft store recently. And this is the one I used on the other one. I used the Sporting Pass one. Uh, so I want to use something different this time. That's kind of pretty, that date one. I like, for this layout, I like a, um, I like a portrait-oriented, um, I think this one might be nice. I like a portrait-oriented card. So let me see how that would look. It covers up a lot of the... If I scooch it over a little bit, maybe even trim off some, or I could justify the edge of that with the edge of the paper. I don't want to cram too much in there, or I could move, switch it around so that I could switch it around so I have that on that side maybe. With that, I could switch it on that side and have it tuck out a little bit more. That might be neat. We could do it that way and I could trim some off. Why don't I do that? Give me a little churn in my drawer. I didn't think I was going to need my churn. But I do. And I've got to trim it because if I try to cut that by hand, that's way too long of a straight edge for me to cut by hand and I will mess it up. So we're just kind of, you're seeing how, like, kind of the design process. Um, let's go, let's cut about a half an inch off. I know it looks really weird and gross kind of like that, but don't worry. We'll fix it. Um, I don't think I'll do stitching on the edge, but I do want to distress the edge and ink it to make it... Um, I didn't ink the map because I didn't want that to stand up too much. That's just a background, but I'm going to ink this just to give it a little bit more um, prominence. And it will also give it a frame and not make it look so chopped off and weird. And I do like some elements to be peeking behind the glassine bag, so when you take the tag out, it still looks really cute. I'm going to use Distress Ink for this. This is just the uh, Vintage Photo, which is a kind of a medium medium brown. I hope I keep everything in, in frame. There. And I'm just going to go right ahead and adhere that down. So yeah, you could also do your, your card the other way. You could do it landscape way, but you might not have room for your your tag might stick out, so you might need to do a bigger envelope if you do that. So that's just, that's kind of just up to you, I guess. Um, still not sure if that's the flower that I want to use. Oh, I could overlay, overlap the flower a little bit too. I kind of like the more feminine style flower. Maybe like that. That's kind of pretty. What was that other one? That really big peony. Oh, that just, that takes up so much space though. We'll try it. Let's see. And so, you know, don't worry. You're going to, you're, I know you may be like, well, I don't have the right pattern paper, but you cover so much up that I wouldn't let that, I like that peony actually. I wouldn't let that stop you from, 
Um, this one's a sticker, actually. I wouldn't let that stop you from trying this card. You know, you could dig through your, your bin of paper that you don't really care for that much. Maybe you have a bin of paper that you use for envelopes because you don't really like it that much. It's too neutral, too boring. That's what you want to use for that back layer because you just want something to give you a little bit of visual interest and texture. It doesn't have to be the best paper in the world. You just want something there that's going to give you a little bit of interest. Okay, so what I want to do at this point, I want to wrap some twine around this envelope. That's going to be kind of my bottom layer. So I'm going to put two tags in here just so I can keep the edges kind of firm because it's really, the glassine bags are very squishable. So I don't want to, I want to make sure my, my string's not going to be too tight. So I'm going to wrap this around a couple times and then just tie it in a knot. I love Baker's twine. I think it's so pretty and so vintage looking. Um, and it's pretty inexpensive. You can get a thing of Baker's twine. Oh, that's a little, it wants to, it still wants to pinch that a little bit. You can get a spool of Baker's twine, pretty inexpensive, or if you want smaller spools, you can get like variety packs on Amazon that are very, very inexpensive. Actually, I have some big spot spools of it and I just put it on cards so that I can carry them with me when I, when I go crafting. My scissors in here are not great for fabric-y things. I could put one of those away. Actually, I can take them both out right now. And the knot, I'm going to be putting wax over the knot, so I'm going to just figure out where, I, which side I want that to go on. I think I might scoot it over this way, actually. And then just spread the strings apart a little bit. Ooh, there. I think the layering is what looks so pretty when you start to like build up the different layers. And now I want to look for some other little doodads and pretties that will look nice here. There's so many different little things. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. I like that. So this is very similar in style to that first one I was going to pick, but um, that's a little bit different. And also it, it can tip the colorway a little bit so more things will match. Like this is more warm tones, that's more cool. That's kind of neutral, that's kind of neutral. Um, you can kind of play with the different, um, I'm gonna glue that down because I like it. Uh, you can kind of play with the undertones of your colors so you can make, you can have a greater variety. Everything's fairly muted, so that works out really well. So, oh, you know what? Now I'm thinking I'm going to scoot that back over there because now that I have that, I don't want the wax to go over my sticker that much. Not with that beautiful white rose at the bottom. Now I think this was a Tim Holtz pack of ephemera. And I can let that overlap the edge of the card too. Okay, I'm pretty sure I don't want to put anything underneath there, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue down the... the um, envelope and actually the ATG adhesive works really well on this glassine you wouldn't think that it would want to stick because glassine has that protective uh, coating on it but actually it works pretty well so and I want that within the stitching because I think the stitching is really pretty so I want to have that inside there I also have some cute little vintage stickers in here um, that might be pretty. Oh, I like that little dress form. I think that would be nice. Let's see, where would I... I just think, I think layering is so nice. Maybe right there. And this is where you just kind of bring in elements from things that you've collected over the years or, you know, we all have those things that are kind of, you know, we buy them with the best intentions. They look so cute, but then when we go to use them, we're like, oh, we can't, like, find just the right thing, you know? So this is a great way to, to put those to use. This one might be pretty, like, right? No, too many circles. Too many circles there. All right, I'm going to put some wax there, and... Um, I have these, uh, there's a bunch of new designs of wax seals and waxes from Altenew. I'll show you these real quick. Um, so they have these nifty handles. There's flowers, there's words, there's envelopes. And then you can get um, these little cups if you want to melt the wax so like over a candle. And they have these little pellets, so like each pellet would be like a wax seal's worth. So they have those, and they also have the traditional... Um, 
sticks, like ink sticks like this, is, which is what I'm going to use because I didn't want to have an open candle on my table. Um, it just seemed like a recipe for disaster for me. Ah, I just used this a minute ago, so it should be fine. i got to get that wick to catch. And, you know, this will take a few seconds. So um, we're going to be stamping in just a minute as we patiently watch wax melt. Isn't that, isn't that exciting? So actually, while I'm just letting this drip on here, I'm going to think about what I want to do for the little bookmark tag. Uh, maybe what color I want to use for a tassel. Uh, I got my tassels right here. I can go ahead and play with some colors. I got some little short tassels. Those are cute. Maybe I'll use that. I've got some longer ones. That curl's kind of pretty. I try to keep in the range. That's a little bit too too dark. I just try to keep in the range. This is the color I used on the other one. That's really pretty too. Um, of everything else I've been using so I don't have anything that's really discordant because I am playing with the colors. Like I got cool pink there and I've got a, um, oops, I lost the, lost the light. Um, because I've got cool pink in one area, I've got like a warm corally pink in another area. So I try to keep my values a little close if I'm playing with a color a little bit just to give me the the harmony. If you don't like the ends sticking out, you can tuck the ends in the wax too. Just be careful. I would have tucked it under before I began melting this. I'm going to use this little magnolia. Or is it a peony? i just press that down. And you want to let that cool. So I'm actually going to set this aside, hopefully, without tipping it over and can let that cool. And then I'm going to grab my tag to do my stamping. And I'm going to start actually with a big block stamp. What did I do with that? Start over here. This is one of my favorite stamps. Um, I think it's Stamp Francisco. It's pretty old, uh, but it's just a big text stamp. You can find stamps like that. Um, hopefully you don't see all that smoke from the <laughs> from the ink stick. It's just like, it's over there, just kind of smoldering. I blew it out, but it's you know, there's a wisp, there's a wisp happening. All right, and then I'm going to lay the tag front side down right on top. So front side can be whatever side you want to be. I go with the one that looks a little bit more finished, and then I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper and lay it on top and just rub over it. And that's going to keep me from getting ink where I don't want it. It's just going to end up on the front of the tag, and it will look lovely. You could cover the back of the tag with pattern paper if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to do that today, but that would definitely make it a little bit thicker and make it look a little bit more uh, finished. Now I am going to just put those die cuts away so I don't accidentally get ink on them or something. And then I'm going to take that same ink pad and the same ink, my little um, makeup brush thing here, and I'm just going to ink that up a little bit. All right, that's pretty. Now I'm gonna do a little stamping. I have got um, this pretty set from Hero Arts. I think I showed it to you on one of my sat chats. Um, it is this one right here. It's a coloring layering set by Hero Arts. Does it have a name? Color Layering Dragonfly. I thought those were all pretty, and also it's pretty bold. I don't need to use any fancy tool. I can just use my blocks, and I prefer to stamp that way. I don't like to have to I don't like to have like have to use a stamp position or any of that business. I like to just go right to town with my stamps. And I'm just going to put this dragonfly right there. And I'm using colors that are also kind of in the uh, in the realm of the different things I've been using. It actually matches the other thing a little bit better, but I still think it will be all right. Yeah, I really don't have many, many blues here. Maybe I should go for greens. Eh, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep with this. Why not? It's too late in the game, guys. I can't start digging through digging through drawers and, and not make this video be like two hours long. <laughs> i got to go with my recent, my previous picks. I can adjust it a little bit. So, guys, when you're using the stamps, you do kind of have to look straight down on them. And... I don't even know if that's lined up well because I didn't want to stick my head in there for too long. That's all right. Um, so just, you know, just excuse my head in the way. There's nothing I can do about that, guys. And I'm using, I, I used pink because I wanted to pull off the color from the background, that pink. 
Actually, it probably should be a little more coral, but I think it'll be fine. And all right, I get my head in there. I'm sorry. All right, and then I did a turquoise and a navy. I think those colors are kind of pretty. Hopefully, it works with this card as much as it worked with the last one. Um, I'm a little off, but it, it doesn't bother me. I'm fine with it. Okay, and now I want to do some. Um, I want to do some other little stamps. I had I had in my stash for a long time. This one that says compositions. I'm gonna do that in a dark brown. I, was, I did it last time. I was using the distress ink for this stamping too, but I thought it just kind of like just faded away too much. And that's all, just a little bit more bold. And then. I think I'll do one of these keys in blue, in that navy. That navy's, navy is a really nice neutral. Um, I know a lot of people don't really think of navy as being a neutral, but um, because it is like, it's like blue jeans, it kind of behaves like a neutral. And maybe put this one with brown right there. Oops, I did navy again. Huh, thought I, I thought I had the brown pad, but that's all right. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, okay, that's fine. I'm not worried. I'm not bothered. Okay, uh, do I need something else maybe then if I'm going to do... Let me do that key again in in the brown because that's that I wasn't expecting that. I feel like I threw the balance off a little bit. Maybe we'll put that just up along the edge. Okay, and now I want to do a little spattering, um, especially because I have some colors on here that I don't really have in the cards, so I am going to use a little bit of sap green, watered down, everything's going to be real, real muted here. So that's another reason you don't have to be real perfect with your stamping because you're going to do some ink spattering, and we'll do a little bit of Oh, that's way too bright. A little bit of crimson. That will help because our pinks are a little bit too pink. And we could do, let's see, maybe like kind of a gray. I don't want a bright blue. Let's do, let's take a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Make a kind of a gray color, just watery. There. And it might even disrupt some of the ink that we stamped with. It will definitely disrupt the Distress ink. Uh, Memento is a little bit more ink resistant, a little bit more water resistant than um, than others. So it generally doesn't bother that too much. And I am going to do a quick blast with the heat tool. Um, honestly, the art that you want to do on your tag can be anything you like. It doesn't have to be uh, stamped. You could do printmaking. You could do just pretty pattern paper. You could collage some paper. You could do whatever you like. Um, now, the back doesn't bother me, but if you wanted to, like I said before, you can reinforce it by using a little bit of um, pattern paper or just slapping another finished tag on there. Uh, I think once you dry it, it's going to be pretty flat, and I really wouldn't worry about it. I'm kind of leaning towards using the green tassel on this because uh, I don't feel like I have enough green in this tag. I think that's good. Um, so let's move this out of the way. What a mess. I make such a mess when I make a card. Man, oh man. It's crazy. All right, we'll bring this back over here. We can zoom in a little bit. I think I can manage to keep it in, in frame. All right, we'll just lift that up. So you can see we got a little bit of a, that rose gold, I think is just really pretty. Um, I was debating between that and the burgundy, but the, uh, the uh, let's see, do I want this? Or do I want that? I think I like the green. This is, I wish the green was a bigger tassel. I might even have a bigger light green tassel. Oh, I do. Is this the right shade? Okay, let's see. I got those tassels on Amazon really cheap as well. They were, um, yeah, let's use the bigger green tassel. Um, I think it was like 100 for like eight bucks or something. It was a really, um, I thought it was a really good deal. And they had such a, light, a nice, elegance to a project. Oh, I like that. Okay, so we'll stick that right in a little pocket here. Okay, and there we have it. I think that's really pretty. And, you know, even if somebody takes out the bookmark, 
to use it, then um, they still got a pretty card because you can see through the layers of that translucent glassine. If you don't have glassine bags, you could make an envelope out of um, vellum or something like that. I think it's just a really pretty, uh, pretty effect. And um, oh, one more thing we can do is we could add a happy birthday. Let me just take a little, um, a little tag here, a little banner. Let me stamp. Let me use brown birthday wishes. We'll stamp that real quick. And we can glue that down because it's nice to have extra birthday cards on hand. There we go. It's not perfect, but neither am I. So uh, we could put that. Oh, you know what? That would have been way better to put in there before I put the. Um, you know what? I'm not going to put that in there. I'll write something on the inside, but. You could definitely put that on there if you wanted to. I did that here. Uh, probably I would layer everything up, do the wax last. That way, if you decide you want to overlap a few elements, you can. But I think that's really cute, really fun, and use up some of your old stash. You know, I'm sure you have stuff that would work that you could use up. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.